Hello everyone, Nisha Manon here, Director of Nikasu Foods and Founder of Jack and Chill. So today I want to say a huge, huge thank you to all of you for giving the massive support you've been giving me by liking, commenting, subscribing and even sharing my videos because I have reached 500 subscribers last week which I never thought I would actually because I just started this YouTube channel to support a few uh, you know few people around so a massive massive thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting all this while and do keep spreading the word around. So in today's video, I'll be covering a question that is asked by Grace, which is one of our followers. And she has asked, what are the questions that you need to ask when you are contacting your supplier or your manufacturer? So I'll be covering around 25, 26 questions, which you can keep them as a checklist or a guide when you are approaching your manufacturer or your supplier. Let's assume you've already shortlisted your manufacturer or the supplier, because that's the first thing you need to do. You need to shortlist at least five to six manufacturers or suppliers whom you want to speak to and do a basic research as well before you go and speak to them. So let's begin. The primary question that you need to understand is the person whom you are speaking to, are they a manufacturer themselves or are they an agent or a dealer or are they a subcontractor? You know, that's a basic thing that you need to understand because if they are an agent or a dealer or if they are a subcontractor, then you know that it's the job is being given to somebody else. So which means your cost can be affected there and your quality also may be compromised because you never know who's keeping an eye on the quality check when the, pro when the products are made. If they are a manufacturer, then you need to understand what products do they actually manufacture. And do they manufacture any products that is similar to yours? If they don't manufacture any products that is similar to yours, do they have the capability or the equipment or the manufacturing facility to make similar products like yours? If I give you an example, somebody had asked us, can you make um, jackfruit sausages for us? Because we are a manufacturer. And I said, we don't have the facility to make uh, jackfruit sausages because you need a particular machinery for that. So we don't have the sausage making machinery, so we can't make that. And then the next thought which you have as a manufacturer is, is it feasible to put a machinery for this customer? Is it how expensive it is? So those are the thoughts that you need to think as a manufacturer as well. So when you are approaching the manufacturer, factor you need to see do they have the machinery or the capability to produce your products then the next one is what is their capacity for production so you can ask them what is their uh, annual volume or you can ask them what is their monthly or weekly volume that they uh, produce the goods as well suppose you get a big order you know from some customer you need to know is your manufacturer or your supplier capable to take, take that order because if they are only a small manufacturer and if they ha don't have the capacity to make like let's say 10 tons of jackfruit then there is no point speaking to them because if you get a big order then they'll not be able to uh, you know sustain the order so that's something you need to understand then the next is um, do they do private labeling so private labeling means do they do the products or the branding in your own brand rather than their brand so if I'm asking somebody do can you do the uh, products in jack and chill brand you know so which means they will be producing the product they'll be putting the sticker and the labeling and the printing on behalf of my company so that will look as my product so that's what you need to understand and if they make in your brand then what is the minimum order quantity so if they, they might say five tons is the minimum order quantity, always, always make sure you negotiate with them because don't stick to what they just say the first time. You have to negotiate and bring it down if possible because your first order especially will be a small order. You can tell them as the company grows or as you get more and more customers, you will place a bigger order. But to begin with, it has to be a small order. And if they are making for somebody else's brand, you need to know what other brands do they already make the same product for? Because that will give you an idea who else is your competitor. Are those competitors based in your market, in your country? Then that gives you an idea that, okay, the same samosas is going in the other brand as well. So I need to understand my competition. That will help you in understanding your competition and also planning your marketing accordingly. And another thing is, do they do 
uh, market locally or do they do exports as well so if they do export which countries do they export to do they already do it to usa uk australia or europe or uh, you know middle east so these are the countries if you are looking for do they already do to those countries the advantage if they are making products in uh, the other brand in these countries is that they already know what are the regulations required the import regulations or the export regulations that is required the packaging Uh, compliance or the labeling compliance you know so these are the things that you know okay because they have already done this for some other brand they already know what to do so that will be a bit of a help when you are a first timer in business next is what is the lead time lead time is uh, what's the time that is it takes for the product to be made to the time it takes to reach you so from the day it's made you have to source the ingredients you have to make the products from there it has to be shipped cleared in the uk or usa whichever country you are in and then it has to reach your warehouse or your uh, you know destination as well so how much time is it going to take from the day it's being sourced or produced to the day you get the goods so let's say it can take around 2 um, to 3 weeks for production then it can take another month like 25 to 30 days for uh, shipping then um, a week for uh, clearance maybe 2 to 3 days or a week for clearance and then the final delivery so almost 2 months will be gone like that that's where you have to keep in mind what is the expiry date they provide that's the next thing that you need to keep in mind because for frozen the good thing is out of all the disadvantages the good thing that frozen has is it has got a longer shelf life 2 to 3 years of shelf life so i don't have to worry if the products doesn't sell quickly but with the ambient products or with other you know spices or anything sometimes you might have only 9 months shelf life or even 10 months shelf life sometimes you can even get up to a year if you have only less than 6 months of shelf life then that is something which you need to be worrying about because you almost lost 2 months in your production and your shipping and uh, you know delivery and everything so after that you've got only 4 months or 3 to 4 months for your selling which means it has to be sold within that period so you have to always try and make sure you get a bit of a longer shelf life maybe i would say about 9 months so you have a bit of a leverage of 6 months at least to sell your products and if they are making the products under your brand suppose if you are making samosas you know or they are making samosas for you and you give them the recipe because you would want the samosas in your own recipe so if you are giving them the recipe and you don't want them to be copying the recipe for some other brand or even to create in their own brand make sure you sign a nda which is a non disclosure agreement which says that this recipe will be yours and this will not be copied or used for any other brand or even their own purposes so that's something which you need to make sure if they have already been exporting then they might also have an idea of if there are any restrictions with these products that you are exporting or importing especially with uh, let's say food products as i said uh, in one of my videos okra you know that was something which we used to import earlier so if we were getting okra from india then we had to submit a pesticide test report showing that there was no pesticides used in okra and we had to submit that to the port health authorities so that's where you need to understand if there are any specific certificates required for these uh, particular products if you haven't seen my video that where i show you how to find the import duty and vat you can check out that video which shows how to find your duty and vat there you'll also see if you require any licenses or any other certificates or special uh, you know regulations if those products have as well if you have any doubts about any of these uh, regulations or the uh, certificates you can always check with hmrc or contact the freight forwarder next you need to ask them what happens if there are any quality issues with the goods so if you find once you receive the goods and there are any quality issues will they take it back or will they give you a credit you know so that's something which you need to speak to them as well then you need to know how will you place the orders with them is it going to be through email or is it going to be through purchase order or is it just going to be through the phone or whatsapp you've got different uh, medias these days so that is something which you need to just make it clear what is it, what how do you place the orders and make sure before you place the orders definitely definitely ask for the samples then 
you can ask for referrals you know can they provide any referrals who they are uh, supplying to like their existing customers because you can always speak to them and understand how good the supplier is so that will give you a bit of a confidence before placing the order also which port do they ship the goods from so suppose you've got two different products and you've got two different suppliers or manufacturers then maybe what you could do is you could bring it to the nearest port you could consolidate both the orders bring it to the nearest port and send it out as one big order to your uk uh, port then what is the cost or the pricing so when you ask them the pricing especially when you when they make you in private label usually they quote you only for the product because usually the uh, the packaging and the printing and the other costs will be extra so make sure you can tell them you want the full product costings or even it will be good if they can give you a delivered cost you might have seen my video which is uh, importing into the uk where i briefly tell you about the two type of costings which is fob and cnf fob is freight on board which means it's a cost up to the supplier's port cnf is cost and freight which means it's the cost delivered to your port which means it includes the shipping cost as well so it will make your life easier if they can give you the cnf cost but if you have contact with freight forwarders or shipping companies here then you can get a better quote and see what they can quote you as well but to begin with it will be good if they can give you the delivered cost including the packaging the labeling and the product so delivered including the carton as well so delivered to you then the most important question is what is the payment terms so they won't give you any credit to begin with because obviously they don't know how you are you don't know how they are as well so it will be 50% advance payment and 50% as you receive the goods that's what usually happens or what you could also do is you could do it through the bank it's called letter of credit or credit letter what happens is that's where the supplier's bank and the buyer's bank they deal with all the documents so what you do is you go to the bank and say you want to open a import letter of credit or you want to open a export letter of credit and then the banks deal with the payments and then the buyer is guaranteed the payment from the supplier and also before you place the order and you have kind of shortlisted from these four or five people whom you speak you might shortlist one or two people make sure you visit the factory or you visit the supplier's office because you need to know how their location is where they are based you know how long have they been in business when you go there those are the questions that you need to ask as well you see their working conditions how do they treat their employees how is their hygiene conditions there then one important thing is what are the certifications they have for food factory usually it will be hasip certification then if it's a it's it's a bit more better one would be iso 22000 certification so if they have these certifications or if they have any basic certification make sure you ask for the copies of the certificates when you get the copies you need to see what the expiry date of the certification is when is the next audit of the factory so those are the kind of things you need to see one good thing would be to take somebody with you if you have somebody who is in the food industry already and who knows something about food business or factory or manufacturing it will be good to take them with you or you can just take your friend or family somebody because it's always good to have those extra pair of eyes who will note some things that you might miss or those questions that you forget to ask then they can ask as well and it's just an extra confidence that you have when you go and speak to them so always make sure you are confident when you speak to the suppliers or the manufacturer don't show that you are naive in business or you are very new to business because people can take advantage of you so make sure you are confident and be prepared for the meeting as that's the reason i prepared these questions as if you can go through these questions mentally just prepare these questions and take somebody along with you so there is somebody to support you when you are going and speaking to these people always 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 negotiate whether it's the pricing the minimum order anything wherever you get a chance negotiate there is nothing to lose so that's it for today 
I hope you have found this video useful. As I said, please make note of these questions. And if you feel there are any questions that you have asked your manufacturers or your suppliers, which I haven't covered in this list, please make sure you put them in the comments below. So it will be helpful for others as well and others can see from that and learn. And uh, keep spreading the word around as I said. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on my future videos.